In today's brief video, I'm going to talk about cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome, and I promise this is not a fear-mongering video. I promise I'm going to help you out if you stick with me throughout the whole thing. My name's Dr. Frank. I once struggled with THC addiction, and I had the first phase of CHS, weight loss, nausea, terrible muscle pain. And I know what it's like to once love weed and now have something that you once loved literally killing you. And that's what we're going to address in today's video. I was scrolling through some threads about cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome, which I linked in the video description below. And one of these comments caught my, per my attention particularly. Back in the hospital after a year of no smoking, I started smoking again every day after over a year sober, thinking I might be all right. And now I'm in the hospital with acute kidney damage. A common myth about cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome is that you can go back to smoking again. And I think what often happens with people who struggle with THC addiction is you quit and you get to a point where you're feeling really, really, really good. Life is going better again. And you say, okay, I'm going to celebrate how good I feel with weed. And I think the error here is we never truly let go of using cannabis as a reward or smoking weed as a reward system. And in the case of feeling good again, I'm going to assume this individual smoked to reward themselves for all the hard work they did after the year, only to wind up back in the hospital with acute kidney damage. When we talk about CHS, uh, it is a permanent condition. Uh, it means complete abstinence from weed for the rest of your life. And please, if that scares you or that thought is too daunting, bear with me. We're going to break this down. Another person comments, these were my kidney levels last year at this time after being admitted. I just got my diagnosis Monday and have almost completely quit. I can't tell you how many times I heard diabetes or cancer from ER docs just to find out it was caused by my chronic smoking. I'm so thankful to be here and thankful to have support. Another major problem that we see with CHS is a misdiagnosis. Either the person doesn't communicate that their doctor that they've been smoking a lot of weed or the doctor isn't aware of the condition or even worse, the physicians don't believe in cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. And this is a major problem among nurses and physicians. And I feel so bad for this person because here they are seeking all these medical treatments for diabetes or cancer. I can only imagine that hearing those things, hey, you might have cancer, you might have diabetes, how much that increased their levels of stress and what presumably did this person do when they had increased levels of stress? How did they cope with that? They probably went, smoked more weed, and then the condition became worse and worse and worse until they eventually suffered kidney damage. Um, this is not a joke. If you're in the first phase of CHS or in the second phase, you're moving towards the stage of kidney damage. And you have the power, you have the ability to stop. I promise you, you do. I understand addiction, but you have the ability to make a choice to stop this from progressing to the next level. Another person comments, um, when we're talking about kidneys, how does THC impact the kidneys? This person says, it may not impact them directly, but malnutrition and dehydration can wreak havoc on the kidneys, especially when you're constantly dehydrated from vomiting or having diarrhea. Um, so personally, in this person's experience, my lack of nutrition, especially vitamin B12, caused numbness and loss of sensation in my skin from the waist down, mainly in my legs and across my abdominal region. I suffered from the same type of paresthesias and numbness and tingling, and to date, I cannot drink me. I cannot drink any caffeine or these symptoms come back. I'm five years sober now. Mainly, my former doctor gave me an MRI since it sounded neurological, which was clear. Some things were related to CHS, but it was indirectly results of the malnutrition and the dehydration. Um, CHS causes its own set of problems, but then the consequences of CHS cause a whole nother set of problems. Uh, it sounds like this person is female, 
if you go a long enough time without proper nutrition, you'll eventually increase your risk for osteoporosis, osteopenia, and bone density loss, which is something that I also suffered from. And this was further compounded by my nicotine addiction and energy drink abuse addiction that I had, the, the rate of bone loss that I experienced. It's no joke. It's no joke. Another person comments, I'm on day 13 of sobriety, and even though I feel better physically, mentally, I'm effed. I've been looking into herbs to smoke because at this point, I miss the action of smoking. Pray for me. I don't want to relapse. I never want to live how I was being that sick. You would think that I would want to quit being as sick as I was, and that would be a good enough reason, but people don't understand how we used weed as a crutch like I was self-medicating. I need a therapist. I'm just ranting at this point. You're absolutely right. A lot of people use weed to cope and we use weed to deal with trauma and PTSD and things that have happened to us in life. And my message to people is, listen, the trauma is there. The PTSD is there. But now we have a whole new set of problems. And we, when we cross over into cannabis addiction and THC addiction, something that maybe was a form of self-medication no longer is. The benefits that you were once getting are no longer there once you've crossed over to this point. And acknowledging that and accepting that is, is a huge part of your recovery process. And in someone in this situation, I would encourage them, now that we've removed weed from your life, which quite frankly at this point was a major hindrance to you getting better psychologically, get a therapist, talk to someone, start to work through these problems. You, you have a beautiful opportunity right now being 13 days sober to start to work on that deep stuff. But just keep in mind, you smoke weed not because of a habit in this case. It's because of a dependence. It's because of an addiction. Uh, so don't worry so much about it being a habit because I promise you that's that's probably not the case. What, what I would encourage this person to do is work with someone and now give yourself space and get the tools you need to deal with all that other stuff. Because whether you're smoking weed or not smoking weed, all that other stuff is still going to be there. Feeling very scared today. Quit smoking a little over a week ago. Uh, thought my recent episode of CHS was over. Only lasted three days, which usually I suffer for 14 days. 14 days of being sick. I'm already 86 pounds. I feel my body is slowly shutting down to, to my weight in this disease. I can't get into my doctor until May 13th. I seriously don't feel as if I will survive. Please, anyone respond. I need help. This person is quite literally potentially shutting down. Um, and that's what happens with any addiction. When we continue to abuse the substance, it eventually just shuts our body down. Um, when your body can't take any more, that's all it knows how to do. That's its defense mechanism. It starts turning off your kidneys. It starts turning down your heart rate. It starts messing down, turning down your breathing. It's your body's attempt at trying to conserve the little energy it has left to survive. And I'm not saying that to scare you. That is the consequence. Um, and you can stop this. You can reverse this right now. This person's doctor, they might admit them to the hospital, which it sounds like they need to get them on some IV therapy and some IV nutrition, but they're not going to stop this disease. There is a cure though. The cure is abstinence. And the cure is, is realizing that you are going to be better off without cannabis. And I understand how hard that is, but I, I guarantee this person they're going to be better off without it. Um, how sad is that? A week out and still having attacks. I worked with a girl. She was 30 days out of quitting and still projectile vomiting. I almost died from CHS. I was vomiting for five days straight before I finally went to the ER. I lost 15 to 20 pounds in a week, and my potassium levels were so low that my kidneys were on the verge of completely shutting down. I spent two nights in the hospital. Um, my body temperature was low right prior to getting real sick. Hot showers would raise that and make me feel completely better immediately. And the person goes on and on. Um, guys, low potassium, not only kidney damage, but heart damage too. This condition has the ability to impact every bodily function, every bodily system. And if you need help quitting, call 
call our offices, pick up the book Rational Recovery, pick up the book The Easy Way to Quit Smoking by Alan Carr, and just replace the word nicotine with cannabis. Do something, but you have to take action because if you don't take action and you don't make a choice, you don't make a decision to quit, um, your body's going to make that decision for you. And I know that we can prevent this. I know that we can do better. I know that we can fix this. And that's why I'm so passionate about this topic. So please get help. Follow me into the next video where I talk a little bit about nutrition and recovering from cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome.